When we think of achievement, we think of changing the world with a new idea. But innovation doesn't always mean an entirely new product. That was true of Ruth Handler, the inventor of Barbie. The story of Ruth Handler and Barbie really begins in the 1940s. Ruth and her husband, Elliot, started a plastics business making picture frames and clocks from a new material called Lucite. They named the business Mattel, a combination of Ruth's husband's name and the name of their then partner. Ruth and her husband became fascinated by the toy business. The handlers came out with something called the Burp Gun. They had invested a fortune getting it to market only to discover that kids were having trouble using the toy. Hundreds of burp guns were being returned. Desperate to save their business, they literally bet their company on a new advertising medium, television, plunking down $500,000 to sponsor a new Disney program called the Mickey Mouse Club. And they would reach not parents, but kids. Ruth brought the same daring to her next product. She noticed that when her daughter and her friends played with paper dolls, they preferred cardboard cutouts depicting young women who they saw as role models. On a trip to Europe, she found her inspiration, Built Lily, a plastic fashion doll created for a German newspaper as a gag gift for adults. She went home and created an American version and named it Barbie after her daughter. Attention was paid to every detail from the design to selecting plastic with the right look and feel. Barbie's wardrobe was hand-stitched by a company in Japan. Once again, Ruth turned to the Mickey Mouse Club. Sales took off. $350,000 were sold in the first year. The company followed up with countless accessories. A male doll, Ken, was named for Ruth's son. Mattel went public in 1960 and swiftly became an industry giant. It entered a new phase. The handlers brought in MBAs who took Mattel on an expansion binge, acquiring everything from a pet products company to part of Ringling Brothers. Soon there was trouble. The handlers were accused of covering up company losses. In the mid-1970s, they were kicked out of their company. Ruth was devastated. The trouble at Mattel led the government to charge Ruth and several executives with fraud. She pleaded no contest and was convicted with a suspended sentence. She had avoided jail, but was now a convicted felon. Slowly, Ruth put her life back together. Mattel eventually brought her back to make promotional appearances. People stood in line for hours to meet the mother of Barbie. By the time she died at the age of 85 in 2002, she was once more admired as a feminist pioneer and business icon. The company she co-founded, Mattel, today employs 31,000 people and more than one billion Barbie dolls have been sold. Ruth Handler's achievement is a powerful lesson about wealth creation. Wealth doesn't just come from discovering oil and new technology, it can come from the simplest of ideas, like a doll that lets young girls dream about growing up. Finally, her late in life comeback shows that with free markets, there are second chances. I'm Steve Forbes.